Okay, I'm going to show you how to make the uh, smaller pieces that go with the ray tripper. This assumes that you have seen the uh, wiring tutorial and you have ended up with your sensor all wired and ready to be mounted. So the first thing we're going to do so that we can test this sensor um, is to get it power. And hopefully you also have purchased um, this AC adapter. This is a 12 volt AC adapter that we're going to put connectors on. Right now it has this round plug. We are just going to cut that off and put on our regular insulated terminals. So just cut it off at the end. So once you have it cut, you can see that there are two wires inside this black insulation. And we need to strip this insulation off about four inches down. And to do that, we're going to use the wire stripper here. And the biggest hole we have here to work with is the 10 gauge. And we hope this will work without taking away any of the inner insulation. So I'm just going to squeeze carefully and turn. definitely nick that black wire but I don't think we I cut through it so it'll be all right all right so now we have those wires exposed now we strip the little wires and this is a little bit easier um, I'm just gonna grab this tool call this the magic stripper it's actually known as an automatic stripper and you just put it in about half an inch, squeeze and pull, and off it comes. All right. So the next thing that we do is um, get some shrink tubing on here. Um, our uh, adapter that we've got here actually looks pretty solid here in this connection, in this uh, where it goes into the block. Now we have used some in the past where there's just a tiny little wire going in there. If yours is like that, I strongly suggest um, either some shrink tubing down there or maybe some epoxy just to shore up that connection. So let's get some shrink tubing on here. This is a quarter inch shrink tubing. It's about four and a half inches long here. And I'm putting both the black and the red wire through and I'm just going to get it down here out of the way like that. Now we take um, some shorter pieces like so, one on each wire. Now the connectors we're using are these pink ones um, these are the smaller than the blue. These are 18 to 22 gauge um, connectors because these are very fine wires on this adapter. So we'll use these smaller connectors. I'm just going to cut a little bit off here. So I like it about 3 eighths of an inch long on the bare wires. And then we take our crimper and we take one of the connectors, and these are female. Female always comes from the power supply. So in it goes, a little twist, and you know it's in there good when you can see it through the uh, terminal plastic. Now, this being very um, a very small wire, you don't want to mash this too hard because this you can sever it. But um, you match it up with the 22 to 18 gauge red dot on the crimper, and you just gently at first press down on the collar and then give it a good squeeze. And I like to squeeze it in a couple of different places without overdoing it because you don't want to cut through. And I actually also like to squeeze the very end here so that it grabs the wire itself or the insulation rather so that looks pretty good let's do the other one yeah 
and it goes. Okay, I can see the wire coming out. And we'll give it a squeeze. And another. And a little bit on the insulation. And I felt that kind of give, so I hope I didn't break the wire on that. We will find out here in a minute. So then you just bring the sh these two shrink tube right up there to the top of the insulation and shrink it up. And then once we have these shrunk down tight, then we bring up this longer piece gently you want to have a little bit of play here don't get these too jammed up like that or you'll find it difficult uh, in the field when you're having to work with these connectors so I'm just going to barely cover that juncture looks like about three quarters of an inch and then shrink it up You can see that where we nicked that wire is, is completely sealed with the shrink tubing, so I'm not too concerned about it. All right. Now we have, hopefully, a functioning, ouch, still hot, a functioning uh, adapter. I'm going to plug it in here, get some power. And then we have the sensor that we wired up. And as you recall, coming out near the sensor end um, are the connectors for the battery or the power supply, depending upon what you happen to be using. Now, um, these are blue connectors, and that only the color only has to do with the size of the wire. So this, these connectors should fit into these connectors without any problem. All right, so now one thing, this is a brand new um, ray tripper. Sometimes when you squeeze down on these male connectors, they will get out of uh, center and you'll have some trouble getting them uh, connected up. So, you know, take a look and, and, and make sure that these are centered. And if they're not, just pull them down with your fingernail. So let's see how we did here. Now, when, when you put these connectors in, you don't need to jam them in all the way. Um, that can cause problems with uh, breaking, break, uh, broken connectors out in the field. So just get them in there enough that it holds. All right, so we have a red light on our sensor. That's good news. Um, to test it, I'm just going to throw a reflector in front. See that, how it turned to amber? That happens when the invisible beam that's coming out of that sensor reflects back to itself um, off of this. And so I can see that that's working and we can proceed. Okay, let's uh, deal with the magnet. This is the sequel alarm magnet that we spec'd for you. Um, it comes out of the box like this with this aluminum thing. So the first thing we're gonna do is just get rid of that by unscrewing these two screws. and just toss that. Now, we uh, typically will use a little block of wood like this. This is a one inch by, I think it's uh, two and a half, something like that. Um, actually, this is a piece of one by four that we cut down to two and a half inches wide or so. Um, and then we want to attach it. I always like to, uh, what we're going to end up doing is, uh, after we get some shrink tubing on this, we're going to end up bringing it around like this and gluing it along the top of the magnet. So I'm just figuring out top and bottom here. 
So um, I want to score these holes again. Just a little dimple there. It shows me where to drill. going to need uh, longer screws than the three quarters so um, I'm going to find some all right I found some screws these are I believe they're number six maybe they're a little bit thinner than what we've been using uh, about inch and a half which will barely fit but they will be fine so we get these screwed in What we need to do is we're going to put connectors on these ends. So I'm going to pull these apart a little bit more. And to sh we want to shore up this entire thin wire. These uh, magnets were really not made to do what we're doing. We're out in the field and they get a lot of hard work, uh, hard use. So we're going to shore up this wire with um, shrink tubing. Now I don't have long lengths of shrink tubing, so I'm basically going to just um, put a whole bunch together. This is just slightly bigger than these two wires, so it'll be a nice tight um, seal once we get it shrunk and we're going to put it all the way to the base right up against that block and I'm going to do these one at a time so I can overlap them all right now we'll bring the next piece Because that one is shrunk, we can try to get this one over it. Yeah, that works just fine. I'm going to overlap it about an inch and just keep doing that until I get near the end. All right, now we need some of our larger shrink tubing, the quarter inch. Because this is the size that fits over the connector. So, about like yay. Um, and we're also going to put a longer piece down the wire a little bit. And you'll see why in just a second. But this is going to protect the juncture. All right, so we're going to slide that down. Again, that's quarter inch right there. This is quarter inch right here. Well, before we do that, I can see that we're going to need a little more wire poking out there for our connection. So I'm just going to take our magic strippers and clear off another eighth of an inch or so. twisting these wires together so they don't jam up trying to get it in the connector. Now, the magnet gets the male connectors and because these are tiny um, we're going to use the smaller 18 to 22 gauge pink male connectors. Okay, we've got our male uh, 18 to 22 
gauge connectors in hand. We've got our quarter inch shrink tubing on the small wires. And of course the longer piece down here. So now we're just going to connect them. Sticking that in. And I can see a little bit of the wire coming through on the other side. So now we're just going to crimp this down. Now these are very, very fine wires and they are delicate. So be firm but gentle. When you are trapping out in the field, I strongly recommend putting together a repair kit where you have some of these connectors, some shrink tubing, um, a crimper, a wire stripper, and a, uh, um, a lighter, a butane lighter, so that you can shrink up the, the tubing out in the field. Uh, because these can break, they can come apart on you, and you just want to be ready. So let's do the other one here. Again, these are male connectors. Now we can uh, shrink up the two pieces closest to the connectors. All right, that looks good. Now we just bring this last piece don't want to get these two locked tight together so we just want to bring this up about like that so you have a little bit of play this way so now we just shrink it all down So the last thing that we do is glue this uh, wire down to the magnet. And I'm mixing up some epoxy here. This is, uh, let's see, what is this? Steel weld, it's called. Um, it sets up pretty quickly, so I need to keep working here. And it's kind of a mess. This won't be pretty, but it will be effective. And what you really want to do is to make sure that you get this part sealed down, glued down, and covered completely with the epoxy. So we're going to just lather it on there like so. And that will protect that wire from all the stresses that it will go through as you're trapping. And I just bring the glue out to the end of the magnet part. Now I could stand here and hold this for five minutes. Or I could try to clamp it, but I want to take a good look all the way around here first. That looks pretty good. All right, that's just going to hold that in place while that glue sets. All right, now that the glue has set, we can uh, finish up with this. And the last thing we have to do is to attach a, um, let's see, this is a one and three eighths inch screw eye to the back of this magnet. So we're just going to drill a little pilot hole, make, taking care not to go into the magnet. So pick a center spot here. And then the screw eye just screws in by hand. All right, the target plate is what the magnet, att magnet attaches to. And it comes with a bunch of stuff that looks like this. So we're going to uh, bust into this little packet. And it also comes with <clears throat> this little template. So we are going to use this. Now, the reason we use this is if you notice, this is actually the top of the target plate. And we could just screw it in like that. But what happens is this thing spins. And so they have um, 
very thoughtfully provided these countersunk holes that you could use these little, I don't know what you call them, these little thingamajiggies that um, stick in there and they, they sink down into the wood and they hold this in place and keep it from spinning. So they have given you a template so that you can line up these holes. So I'm just going to really quickly figure out where these holes go. So they want you to drill a 3 16th hole in the middle and I've lost my little ball. Okay. We'll use this. So there's our first hole. went through. Oh well, shit happens. It's not going to have any bearing on how this functions. Um, so there's our first hole and then the other two are slightly larger. Let's see. Make sure we get this lined up here. That's right. So this is a 732nd right in there. And right in here. Now we'll try not to go too deep this time. Well, let's see how we did now. Oh yeah, that looks a lot better. Now, you can see these are sticking up just, you know, about an eighth of an inch, which is going to settle nicely um, given the thickness of this plate. So let's hope we got them lined up. just giving me a little bit of a hard time here. Okay, that was really giving me a hard time until I found my hammer and I set this on the concrete floor and I tapped these in to the plate first. So now we can um, just set it down into those holes and put the screw in. One of the wood screws that came with it. And that's all there is to that. Now, the last thing we do is um, put in another screw eye. So we actually have the, uh, the main screw right here. So we'll just offset it a little bit like this. It won't matter at all. So the next thing we're going to do is to mount the sensor onto one of these CCTV mounts. When you get this out of the box, this nut is loose and you'll want to tighten it up with a 10 millimeter wrench. Um, there is never a reason for this to be loose. Um, you have full flexibility to aim this thing any way you want. So rather than have this loosen up in the field when I don't have a wrench, um, I've put super glue on those threads and those are down there permanently. So um, I'd, I'd recommend that because um, you, just, uh, you just don't want that moving around on you. So. That's, uh, that's the CCTV um, 
camera mount, which we're going to use for the sensor. Now, when you open up the um, sensor box, you will see a couple of different brackets. We're going to use this one with the two sides. Um, and this comes with screws and nuts. Now, the one little trick about this is that we're going to mount it like this. In order to get this on here, we need a little more clearance right there. So I'm going to bend that back a little just to give us a little more room. I'm going to mash this down right next to that edge, right in there tight, and then take a channel lock and just roll it back. You don't have to go far. you might uh, get a little neater job there but that should work for us so um, the next thing we do is we put our sensor in now you will see um, where these holes line up I bring the sensor flush to the edge here of the bracket and then we look at where we end up with the nuts and the screws um, the screw head goes on this side and the little nut slips down into that uh, little hexagonal area cut into the sensor. So, and we just tighten it up with a screwdriver. And the next one. Right. You will find as you use this out in the elements that this will rust up, which is really what you want. You don't want this uh, sensor moving on you when you have it deployed because it can slip and uh, the beam can come out of alignment and that accidentally drop the gate right when you don't want it to drop. So be sure you mash this down and you can actually if you if you want to bend this back a little bit if you want to have a little bit more square all right so that is the sensor mount and I'll show you where we go from here in just one second one thing I forgot to show you is that you really should tighten up this nut on the bottom so grabbed a 7 16th wrench and I'm getting that nice and tight up against that bracket. We're going to be mounting the sensor into one of these little storage boxes that I got at a local hardware store. Um, this is rather on the small side but we do this deliberately because this is small enough to send in a priority mailbox and we ship these ray trippers around sometimes. Um, if you use a larger battery case box, you will be able to pull in all the wiring. Uh, all the wiring will fit inside the box, and then you can use it like a carrying case. So that's kind of cool. So the first thing we're going to do is pull this um, lid off the box. This is really easy to do because the hinge will just pop right off, just like that. And then I'm going to take this little um, hinge piece off, this little clasp, by just muscling it off with a pair of channel locks. So, the next thing we're going to do is to drill a hole. We need a hole in the back of the box. I suggest putting it off to one side. So, we're going to use a one inch spade bit for that. And I'm just going to take advantage of this little area right here and put it right off to the side. It's better to do it in the side so the moisture can't come in through the top, for example. And there's that. Now what we want to do 
is to set our sensor in there. So I am just going to put it off to one side and I'm going to put the wire off in the direction of the hole just like that and I'm going to mark the holes on the base of the mount. I'm just going to put a little puncture mark in there so I can find it with a drill. Center it laterally or vertically I should say and mark it. I'm just going to drill a hole where each of those marks are. <laughs> this up and get it ready to mount with some small uh, machine screws. So now we just line up the base with the holes that we drilled and then bring the screws in from the underside and then attach the wa washer and nut. This is easier to do if you have a nine millimeter socket that you can hold the nut down as you're tightening from the other side. And now it might be handy to uh, go ahead and bring this wiring through for the sensor through the hole that we drilled and get it out of the way. We do recommend that you use brackets uh, on the top of the sensor box especially. Um, and that will help hold it in place in case the dog, when he's circling the trap and frustrated trying to find a way in, um, sometimes they will paw on these boxes. And if they're not secure, it could break the beam, cause the door to shut, and then, um, then you have problems with the dog being spooked. So these brackets help prevent that. You want them, you know, three or four inches from the side. This does not have to be precise. I'm going to mark it in the strongest part of that box there where that border is. There's one hole. We'll put the other one here. These brackets also get attached with small machine screws with a washer and nut on the other side. The next thing we're going to do is to attach the uh, footmen. These are the little keepers that um, uh, hold our strap in place, the little hook strap. And having this on the box um, keeps you from losing that strap when you're out trapping some dark night. So I'm just going to put this approximately in the center, a, a comfortable distance away from the edge, and then uh, mark where I want to drill my holes. That looks good just like that and we're going to uh, attach these with the same little machine screws that we used on the uh, brackets and when you're attaching these straps you want the hook to face the inside of the trap and um, on the short strap you won't be able to pull it through that footman because of where the buckle is so you have to put that in there before you um, fasten this second half of the footman down. So that is now in place and then we just screw it in. Now we do the same thing to the other side marking where we want the footman.
Now all we have to do is run the strap through the footman, connect it to the buckle so we're ready to trap. So the last thing we're going to do is to create a reflector board um, out of the lid for the box. Now this box, like I said, it's a storage box and it's not really flat here very well um, for uh, um, taping down our reflective tape. So what I've done is to create a little wooden platform. I'm going to glue that in there. And then I'm going to put the reflective tape on that uh, wood. Now, that's you don't have to do that. Um, getting pretty fancy there because of the needs of that particular box. If you use a battery box, you should have enough flat area right in here that you can just tape this down and you'll have a nice big reflector like that. One thing I forgot to mention is that you will probably get a couple of these footmen um, free included with your battery case if you buy a, a marine battery or a scooter battery case usually these come with a strap um, I'm going to just attach two of these footmen to the top of this reflector board and then show you the finished piece um, not take you through all of that because I think you know how to do that the only other important thing you need to know is that do this first because you'll be putting um, reflective tape on the other side and you may cover up uh, where the bolt needs to go. So that is the completed reflector board and that brings us to the end of the tutorial. Um, I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions or need clarification on anything, please let me know. Post a question in the comment section and I'll be um, happy to help you out. Have fun with your raid trip or good luck and let's bring those doggies home. <laughs>